What's going on there guys? Good morning, good afternoon to some out there. It's Earthmaster here on this beautiful Tuesday, July 12th, 2022 date, about 11.40 a.m. California time here along the west coast. Latest earthquake, looks like a 2.7 here in, eh, it kind of looks like it's out there in Nevada. On the green flag there, showing the latest earthquake. A little bit of activity ramping up here, including, uh, looks like we had a 4.6 earthquake in Mexico earlier. Also some activity ramping up inland as well, further down south. Uh, we'll get to that in just a second, but first I want to go over a little image here that, well, I shouldn't say little image, this is a pretty big image being put out by the NASA.gov website in regards to the web images. Some deep space image, infrared images with color added, added here. There's some spectacular looking images um, that's being uh, brought up from the uh, web telescope. Uh, it's pretty mind-boggling if you really think about it how uh, how far these guys can can see in here I just kind of zoomed in and uh, if, you, if you zoom in even more you can see all these little galaxies out here uh, even in some of the darker regions of this image which is actually as I mentioned um, the deepest image um, out there in space that uh, has been created that has been viewed and it is impressive let me tell you just like I've been looking at this image for for a while now since they put it out and it's um, like I said it's just mind-boggling uh, to think about it it's incredible um, it's the web telescope the uh, uh, on the nasa.gov website uh, I'm sure you've seen it it's all over the place all over the news sites and agencies and whatnot so uh, if you haven't, check it out. Read up a little bit about it. Um, here it says uh, that the James Webb Space Telescope has delivered the deepest and sharpest infrared image of the distant universe so far. Not not the near universe, but the distant. We're talking about areas that uh, the Hubble Telescope had issues seeing. Uh, and they kind of pointed it there in that direction where there's you know, darkness. And they came up with this image. It's pretty cool. Incredible. All right. Earthquake activity, what's going on here? Um, so movement as noted here in the Mexico area, 4.6, well inland. Uh, it's been a little while since we've seen any uh, larger scale earthquake activity here in Mexico. Looks like we're missing the one down south here uh, that is on the Earthquake 3D globe. That's gonna be, uh, I believe this one right here. Let's go ahead and zoom in from the EMSC model. And we'll take a look at that earthquake down south there as well. Um, there's a whole bunch of them of course there's a lot of them in the in the mix uh, but it kind of looks like it's gonna be the well one of these earthquakes down here let's see stand by for just a second here there's unfortunately us the uh, EMSC model does show quite a bit when you click on them that includes twos and threes um, it looks like that was a 4.8 near the Costa Rica area but uh, maybe the USGS will add it on. We'll see. Either way, definitely some activity ramping up here inland into the Mexico region and down south, as noted, um, towards the uh, Costa Rica area. South America has remained relatively quiet. That's you know, a little odd because this is a, a pretty large subduction zone here, um, taking um, the Prudchili Trench, that is, uh, in this area. So uh, I'm sure it's just a matter of time before that starts rocking and rolling. Uh, way up north here in the Davis Strait, this earthquake came in uh, earlier this morning time frame, 5.2 earthquake. Been a little while since we've seen further movement up there, so we're getting some little spotty earthquakes in areas that we normally don't see them. And this up here is one of them for sure. Uh, inland into Mexico as well. Of course, we, we get quite a bit here along the um, Middle America Trench, but as far as inland activity goes, that's a pretty good uh, little quake there for Mexico area. Uh, let's see what else we got here for Alaska. This is a 2.5 and above, so a little bit of movement up in Alaska once again uh, as well. Uh, of course, they had that 4.7 shaking things up outside of the Anchorage area last night. Prior to that, we had a 4.3 earlier yesterday, so things kind of ramping up here in this region. If you look at the depths, they're about 51 kilometers and 30 kilometers, a little bit of deeper activity uh, striking into this area of the subduction zone. Got the Pacific Plate south and the North American Plate north. 
Uh, this 4.7, let me see, I'm sure this was felt over the area of uh, all over Anchorage, it looks like. Some light to possibly moderate shaking reports there around the Anchorage, Alaska region from that 4.7. But uh, historically, look at that. I mean, historically, uh, I don't think we need to take note too much, but uh, it's there. These guys get some rather large quakes uh, up in the six to seven range and above into this major area called the, uh, well, it's a, close to the Gulf of Alaska, right? It is the Gulf of Alaska, major subduction zone all up and down the board, look at that. So no stranger to large earthquakes up there in Alaska, that's for sure, and tsunamis. Uh, let's see, Japan, look at that, absolutely quiet today around the Mariana Trench and the Kurokamchaka down to the Japan Trench, really quiet. Most of the activity has sustained or remained south here of the Philippine Plate, uh, right around the Indonesia Islands westward and to the southeast here, all seeing some uh, earthquake activity. Um, most of this was from yesterday, it looks like we did have a couple smaller uh, fours in the mix this morning, including another deep earthquake here, 549 kilometers for a 4.2 into the Tonga Trench, uh, and the most recent quake within this area, 4.6. So, uh, deep earthquake activity definitely followed up by some larger uh, scale movement surface activity to the west, and I wouldn't I wouldn't doubt it if we start seeing some further activity again today within this region of the Kermadec Trench southward. One area that hasn't seen any uh, movement following all this movement yesterday and, and the deep activity is further down south here into the uh, just south of New Zealand. So watch that area pretty closely. Uh, we did have some movement over in the eastern Afghanistan area. Deep activity once again. A couple low grade fours down there close to uh, 200 kilometers there for one of them. Um, Indian Ocean uh, looks pretty quiet. Uh, this earthquake over here from yesterday. Uh, 4.6 Let's see what we got for Puerto Rico these guys getting their swarming activity back up overnight again around the Puerto Rico trench around the Br uh, British Virgin Islands area uh, but right now most recent earthquake activity looks like it was a while ago uh, into the swarming region here of Puerto Rico so things kind of tapering off a little bit here for now just a little quiet spell uh, let's see what we got. Texas, a little activity up through Texas and also outside of San Antonio near the Yorktown, Texas area, 2.9. Um, looks like a little bit of earthquake activity out there. <clears throat> let's see what we got for satellite views. Uh, it's in the, uh, it's in the uh, minefields. Well, not really the minefields, but the uh, oil pumping operation fields. All these squares, rectangles, um, and there's, these are literally within feet these earthquakes are within feet of uh, quite a few of them. Uh, got the uh, pond out here, injection well sites, injection of wastewater. Uh, these down there about 3.9 kilometers or so below the surface. And again, scattered amongst hundreds and thousands of uh, oil wells out there in the beautiful state of Texas, eastern part of the country, pretty quiet, uh, inland getting a little activity once again ramping up here around Eureka Nevada and uh, some spotty activity throughout the rest of Nevada but most of the activity here along the west coast looks as though it's down here at least within the last hour around the Ridgecrest region a couple twos popping off here including the 2.7 some activity around the uh, Glendora area West Covina region northwest of Ontario 0.9 and some activity in a little swarm fashion here in the uh, all this little I know there's a little there's a couple fault systems that kind of run through here and stretch apart uh, it is in that area where we see the plate boundary of the, uh, the called the San Andreas fault and many other fault systems here kind of push together and kind of spread apart so we're getting a little bit of swarming within that area within that uh, uh, it's kind of a danger zone for sure. Quite a few small microquakes in that area today and overnight. Again, that's pretty close to the uh, San Andreas Fault as well. Uh, one earthquake in the red circle here along the San Jacinto Fault Zone near the Borrego Springs area, 0.8. Not a whole lot going on down here in the Salton Sea. No major swarms going on, just a couple small microquakes for now. Northern California, pretty spotty activity up here. Not a whole lot going on. 
Got one earthquake here in the uh, Rodeo. Never heard of it. Uh, outside of Vallejo, south of Vallejo, it looks like 2.5 at 6.6 uh, .6 kilometers. It looks like that earthquake is, uh, I'm not for sure, it's in between the Hayward and the uh, Concord fault system, it looks like. There's a couple other smaller faults that run through here. Uh, let's see what else we got. Uh, yeah, so a couple a couple uh, active regions, Alaska, and of course the movement down there in the uh, uh, Fiji Islands area. Pahala definitely uh, ramping up within the last hour. Big island of Hawaii here along the southeastern region. Very typical though of swarms in this area. It's been ongoing for quite a while, uh, for, for many, many years, and in fact decades. Uh, up here north, little activity around the uh, what do we got up there? Volcano area, Volcano Hawaii, Island of Hawaii, Hawaii. Okay, that makes sense. <laughs> 2.3 at 28 kilometers. Some of this earthquake activity underneath, well underneath the region, it has to do with the pressure there on the on the uh, islands and the Pacific Plate. Uh, ch -ch 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 -ch. What else we got? Uh, checking out Yellowstone real quick here. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Not seeing too much going on here, folks, uh, throughout the Yellowstone area. Again, a lot of these signatures that you guys are seeing right here, are those distant fives and sixes that popped off yesterday, uh, late and early uh, early evening time frame. <clears throat> those sixes do leave a, uh, a mark like that, and that's a sign of a distant, large earthquake. You should see the Yellowstone graphs when an 8.0 hits, or including the 9.0 in Japan. It really shakes things up quite a bit so these little sixes are not localized but very or these uh, signatures from the sixes are definitely far away not localized signatures as uh, far as localized earthquake activity it's going to look something like this folks well-defined spikes very localized maybe one right there a couple in the mix but no major earthquake activity or movement to take note of here today and remember uh, wind events can create interference on the seismograph stations themselves, folks. We've seen it happen all across the board, um, and it's just uh, it's, it's common. Weather can play a big part. When thunderstorms roll through here, we can see that show up on the graph as well. So, uh, defining underground activity, you know, vibrational frequencies from the uh, activity above the ground, uh, it's pretty easy to do if you. Uh, uh, look at the graphs here and then compare that to weather charts and whatnot and wind events that are taking place here at Yellowstone. But for now, all looks calm. Just a couple small microquakes uh, in the area. Northwest corner, it looks like. 155 epicenters of tremor last night along the Cascadia, uh, mostly into the southern end, it looks like. Uh, we haven't checked out Mount St. Helens in a little while, so we'll see what we got here for some uh, microquakes. I'm sure it's been active well actually doesn't look too active here uh, over over overnight and this morning time frame a couple small microquakes very small very very small overall not a whole lot going on there at uh, mount st helens solar weather activity is a different story things are getting um very active right now we do have two major sunspots that are directly facing earth 3053 and 3055 with some new trailing sunspots over here newly named 3057 is growing pretty dra uh, drastically and dy dynamically so we'll watch that one pretty closely there's a 99% certainty of sea flare threats the solar x-ray the flux data is consistent in the sea flare and upper sea flare so kind of pop in there like popcorn sizzling a little bit kind of like that fajita plate they get there at a uh, nice Mexican restaurant when they deliver it to your table just sitting there sizzling yummy that sounds actually pretty good uh, we haven't seen any major in flares yet but uh, again these are directly facing earth and uh, could be happening any minute now uh, we did have a little elevated KP index air up around the five range this morning um, looks like some uh, solar wind stream coming in there speed did ramp up pretty significantly probably from a glancing uh, CME or the uh, coronal holes that were facing us here a couple days ago speed ramped up up around the 500 km range and i uh, had a little sub uh, 
BZ um, tilt there towards the south, it looks like, uh, allowing that uh, wind stream to flow right in and create some uh, uh, potential aurora conditions at the higher latitudes. And I'm sure the South Pole region specifically there. But uh, sunspot activity, got to watch it. 50% chance of an M flare, 15% chance uh, for the proton flux or a uh, proton and the X flare. Uh, we'll watch that pretty closely here throughout the day today. All right, folks, have a good day. Um, don't forget to enter the 75,000 subscriber giveaway. We are up to date on the entries. Uh, Missy Mimi's has been working hard on that, getting all the entries in into the drawing that's going to be held this Sunday. Um, the last day for enter to enter is going to be um, Saturday. So you got to get your entries in by Saturday night to win uh, six. We're going to pull six people out, folks. So the odds are pretty good uh, for getting uh, some cool prizes. Uh, comments will be disabled uh, at midnight um, there on Saturday night, late Saturday night there. So make sure you get your name in and uh, the word enter into the comments. And then we'll do the drawing live and, uh, of course, pick out six people and, and then go from there. All right, let's see what else we got. Is that about it? Um, that's about it. That is about it. Just looking at this uh, regional view here. North American plate there. Looks like it's under quite a bit of stress here from Alaska down south all the way up here to the northeast. So... Could be a hot shot or a hot spot day today uh, for the North American plate. We'll keep an eye on it for sure. Alaska, again, a major player in producing some large quakes. Got to watch that when we get a, quite a few threes and fours kicking up there into that subduction zone. That could be pointing towards something much bigger uh, in the area. All right, guys, take care. Going to be another hot 106 degrees today. Yay, I'm staying inside. Have a good day, folks. Catch you later.